Hello and welcome to the live show studio panel discussions. In these discussions, industry experts will discuss the most important fashion shows from this season. In this discussion, we are taking on Bethany Williams. I am Jamie Windust, and I will allow our panel to introduce themselves. I'm Pedro Bassa, I'm a knitwear designer. I am Matthew Needham, I am a designer and upcyclist based in London and about to graduate from MA Fashion at Central St Martins. I'm Helen Kirkham, I'm a footwear designer and artist also based in London, focusing on recycled uh, sneakers. I'm Jane Williams from the Magpie Project and we collaborated with Bethany on this collection. Brilliant. So today we are going to have a, have a casual chinwag on this Sunday about Bethany Williams. Now, I feel like she's one of those designers that has had almost a, just a monumental rise since last year. You know, it's nearly been a year since she won the Queen Elizabeth Award. Do we think that level of kind of trajectory is important? Because I think last night at the show, there were so many people, it was so busy, there's a lot of hype around it. Do you think for such young designers like this, that, that can be a hindrance or do you think it's actually a blessing initially? I mean, knowing Bethany for like two years now and to see the, the understanding that people have now of the work that she does, it's very, um, it's really nice to know that people are actually taking interest and beyond the clothes themselves. So understanding the projects that she works with and um, what the clothes mean and the sort of process that she goes through, it's um, comforting to know that if you're doing something that's different or um, trying to make change in this climate now, people are listening. And mm -hmm. I think that's, it, it's really nice to know. So to see that many people there yesterday, I mean, we were saying it's like she just, it was like another level yesterday. It was yeah. so warming to like see that many people there. I think the um, <clears throat> the BFC award as well really um, was the reason as to why so many people there. But yeah, it was really nice to see that. Yeah, yeah. I think same really. I think there's a lot of it can be a lot of pressure, of course. Like it's a lot of um, stress to suddenly be thrust into the limelight like that. But I think, um, as Matthew said, you know, those sort of projects that she's doing are so important that it's really, um, yeah, really good to know that people are taking interest. And I think because of the current climate that we're in, because of the way that things are progressing, you know, Bethany is one of those people that people can almost latch onto in a way and be like, she's doing something good, so let's support yeah. her. And I think that's... Yeah only to her benefit really and it's you know it's important for the fashion industry and it's working as well yeah, yeah. that's what's great yeah. yeah yeah sure i definitely think it's more of a blessing than a hindrance mm. um just the fact that she's bringing so many of these social um things to the forefront mm -hmm. is so important and i yeah. think you know the more that it's put in the limelight like that the better yeah Obviously, with the, the Magpie Project and that collaboration, how, how did that begin? What was the kind of journey with, with Bethany reaching out to you and kind of getting that going and then having it be such an integral part within the collection? So uh, we work with uh, UCL. Um, uh, we have a PhD student who studies under Monica Lake and Paul in a sort of uh, health and social uh, care uh, arena. Um, uh, we've got a PhD student working with us and the mums um, to map um, how their homelessness is affecting their health and yeah. so on. Um, that's got a public engagement arm. So Diana Rosenthal, uh, our PhD student, I think knew Bethany um, and spoke to her about the project um, and then uh, came to us and I was like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't sound very... Yeah. Uh, so I had an idea in my mind of a menswear designer, and I was uh, I don't know how this will fit, yeah. um, because it seemed like we were worlds and worlds apart. But Diana did a lot of initial work uh, with Bethany uh, to make sure that there was enough time in the run-up, and then Bethany came to visit. She threw a lot of time at us. I mean, this is not just a sort of a green washing or ethical washing process. She was there yeah. um, in the mornings, organizing the nappies, making cups of tea, talking to mums. Um, and then she brought Melissa um, to, the, uh, to the projects and she created all these beautiful prints based on uh, 
the idea of motherhood mm -hmm. and mothering and nurturing, but under extreme duress and under extreme pressure, and how our project is just there to protect that bond mm. between mother and child. Mm. And mother can be anything in that situation, you know, yeah. because I know that Bethany works a lot with house mothers as well in the trans community. So it just the idea of family, but on a very wide yeah. scale. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just went organically, bit by bit, um, and sort of tried to bridge the gap uh, between where she is and where we are. Yeah. But actually, we found that incredibly easy because she is open and she is relaxed and she's determined and she knows exactly what she wants and she wanted to give us her spotlight. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an incredibly generous thing to yeah. do. So in answer to your first question, mm -hmm. um, I think that for other people, their heads could be turned by this much success. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I've seen Bethany make really, really uh, difficult decisions mm -hmm. uh, based on her very clear sort of ethical mm -hmm. uh, and moral stand. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that she does that and she turns away collaborations and she mm. turns away uh, things that, she, that, that don't fit with her. So yeah. I think that she's got such a clarity of vision that it's almost as if uh, other people are gonna have to kind of fit in alongside her rather yeah. than her fit in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the, the industry seems to be yeah. reacting to that really mm. positively. Because I think that clarity really came through in the kind of design and the aesthetic of the collection. Because I think often what can happen is visually and aesthetically with the collection of when someone has achieved such success they sometimes feel like they have to really change it or they have to kind of do something completely unexpected but if you're to look at the previous men's and women's wear collections that she's done and then to look at what she presented yesterday um there was unison in there there was continuity but in a way that was was fresh i think was there any standout pieces for anyone i really liked the long line double-breasted coat, which is right at the end. I thought that was really brilliant. Mm. I just think it, because it is traditional menswear, but I think the show itself, for me, um, I don't know if this is just my, my lens that I take with life, but it felt very queer. It felt very fluid. It felt very kind of unlimitless. And I think that I really liked what she said uh, in the press, actually, about how that notion of motherhood and family isn't just biological family and it's mm -hmm. chosen family and I really liked that kind of almost allyship in a way to kind of have that and she had <clears throat> she had trans models in the show which I thought was really brilliant um, but aesthetically you know I'll put my hands up I'm not a huge fan of menswear but I was I enjoyed it I thought it was absolutely brilliant um, anything that anybody cried over Overnight. I mean, I think for me, generally, I think you guys will agree as well, is that this is, this is where it goes beyond sustainability, but just material sustainability. Because sustainability is not just the material you make the clothing out of. It's yeah. why the clothes exist, why they're there, what story do they tell. Yeah. And it's what you were just saying now about how fluid the clothing is. It's because it's not menswear, it's not women's wear. It's just clothing for everyone, but it tells this story, you know, and that's the power that fashion has and Bethany is someone who utilizes it in the right way yeah. and it's not for self gain it's to share the stories of people who don't have these platforms mm -hmm. you know like it's like students at St Martins for example like we need to use the platform in order to talk about real things mm -hmm. you know things that really matter in the world because we've had enough clothes for so many years mm -hmm. that now we need clothes that really progress you know the way we are as humans and humanity mm -hmm. rather than it just being taking it at face value and you know oh, it's a nice print but no what does that print mean yeah you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's what um was so clear with this and so evident and i agree with you as well that it felt so inclusive you know you don't necessarily um it's so universal it can appeal to anyone and also the silhouettes as well are quite um, wearable they're extremely wearable actually mm -hmm. so it's not so avant-garde that it's hard to understand you know it's mm -hmm. trousers and jackets and coats and you know all those sort of things that are quite um, straightforward but as Matthew said all those um, behind the scenes elements the choice of models the choice of music the choice of um, projects everything is so inclusive and I think that that is um, 
and challenged. So evident, yeah. yeah. And um, also in terms of pieces, I know a little bit from um, speaking to Bethany as well, for example, with that coat, the blanket coat, and I think there's also another coat that was like a duvet, a big um, long line kind of puffer coat and those again were inspired by the project yeah, by yeah. the the blankets yeah. um and i think you know just those sort of details that are so personal mm -hmm. and a lot of people won't pick up on but she has a reason for every single thing that she does yeah, and really. i think that is what's um you know will stand the test of time much longer than a nice silhouette you know mm -hmm. yeah definitely i think her work this season especially is quite loud and not just in the bold prints and the colours and the different um, contrast that we see with the textures and things. It's mm -hmm. loud in the fact in it means so much to her cause. Mm -hmm. I think she promotes it well. Definitely. And I think what's interesting about it is like, well, obviously, I lay my cards on the table. I'm a massive fan because you know why <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I, I think what she's doing is something really quite extraordinary actually Definitely. because I think that she's redefining luxury and now luxury is not um, about how much something costs about uh, the uh, cost of the materials it's about being ethically at ease with yourself and things being utterly traceable and utterly um, uh, you know having like getting up in the morning and not having an ethical twinge about oh i wonder if this was made in the sweatshop in china mm. but it's so lovely you know you don't have mm. to have that that dilemma and i think that that sort of sense of being ethically at ease and in your world is like that is a luxury and mm. i found in my own life i gave up a big job and um, did something which i had no ethical qualms with mm -hmm. and you can't buy that luxury yeah. you know um, and i think that that's what's so interesting about what you were saying matthew is that it's, it's so much more mm -hmm. than uh oh we're giving a nod to this yeah you know yeah. and it's so much more than the materials it's about actually making the connection between what you do in terms of buying your clothes and someone halfway across the road, the, the world, you know, mm -hmm. these are going to be sold in a Tokyo department store or boutique. Mm -hmm. And then somebody in Newham who's got no recourse to public funds and uh, who doesn't know where their next meal is coming from mm -hmm. is going to benefit. I yeah. mean, it's extraordinary that Bethany has this vision of how we're all interconnected in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and she can leverage it for you. Yeah. yeah. I like what she said before. She said about how, you know, with that kind of almost relaxation of ethical stability means that she just doesn't really care about a lot of the business decisions. Yeah. Not in a crude way, but like, yeah. you know, people, she was saying how people were going to not know where to stock it, whether it's men's wear or women's wear, and she just doesn't. Yeah. really care. One of the main things that she said was she likes the fact that, you know, a man could buy this collection, but he know, she knows that his money is going to go and help people like you. So it's that kind of sustainable feminism that I think a lot of the time we see, especially in kind of queer fashion as well, we see a lot of commodification mm -hmm. and we see a lot of, um, as opposed to greenwashing, we see pinkwashing, we kind of yeah. see it kind of being sprinkled on top rather than fully ingrained here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this will inspire other designers? Because, for example, going back to you know, queer fashion, a lot of people try and say that houses like Art School and Charles Jeffrey, what they do is they inspire other straight or cisgender designers to make their collections more queer. What can then happen then is that the, the payoff isn't as good and it's not as authentic. Do you think that same kind of storytelling mirrors in, in greenwashing? Do you think that if other brands try and be more sustainable, it's actually, they need to just go the whole hog and they can't just sprinkle on? Mm. I, I think okay. in terms of um, <coughs> Bethany's inspiration to people, I don't think that they would be inspired in a kind of half-hearted way, in a mm. sense. I think that because everything she does is so powerful and so authentic and genuine, I think that if I speak, you know, from personal experience, I'm extremely inspired by what she does, and it does mm. um, make me think about how I can move my business in ways that 
I can work more socially or I can um, build relationships better with the projects I'm already working with and things like that. So I think that it's not, I don't imagine that students, for example, would be inspired like, oh yeah, maybe I'll just do a bit of this, you know. I think mm -hmm. they would either do it all mm -hmm. or I don't know if she would be the specific designer that they would would yeah. appeal to them if they don't have those mm -hmm. um, morals in mind in a way because I think yeah. that she is so genuine that you can't run away from that in her collection yeah. in a way. I think since, so we had all the climate marches last summer, going into the end of last year, we had like the Phoebe English um, opening up transparency and a lot of designers were sort of latching onto that model and being inspired to change the way that they run their business. But it's good for anyone to do anything and change anything mm -hmm. for, for the better. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for someone like Bethany, it's so integral and ingrained, like you were saying, in her as a person that feeds into her work that every single part of her business is built upon helping and like it's, it's ethical values, yeah. you know, which some designers might not necessarily have from the get go. Maybe people attain them throughout, you know, their career. Um, sometimes it's for self-gain, which mm -hmm. then leads to greenwashing, and maybe it's a way that you sell your, your clothing to somebody. Um, but yeah. yeah. And I think also going off on that was so strong about um, what Bethany's done is she's started like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not so like it's Matthew was saying, like yeah. sometimes, you know, especially now, a lot of brands are finding to kind of scrambling to try and work out how they can um, create more sustainable business you know work yeah, with yeah. more ethical materials and all and you know better factories and all that sort of thing but because she's started from such a strong moral standpoint she's got such a um, kind of rigid platform to excel on and I think mm -hmm. that that once she's got all those foundations or as she has got all those foundations in place now you know she can really just drive it forward so mm. it's not so um, you know as other brands might be struggling now I think that's yeah. Bethany's chance to because it's, uh, we're at a time where it's almost, it is a necessity mm -hmm. to have some sort of sustainable, you know, outlet in your, in, this, in your company or talk about it in some sort of way, otherwise you become irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like that's the way that the fashion industry is because we go through trends and we go through motions and you have to be of the times. Mm -hmm. So for certain people who have been in the industry for so many years, they might just see it as, oh, it's, it's of the now, so I need to be involved in this movement mm -hmm. somehow. I need to put myself there at the forefront. Yeah. Um, but for someone like Bethany, I think people are scared as well because, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, she's literally changing the game yeah. for the better. And showing that it's possible as well. Yeah, and for the people who have never had voices, the people who have been mm -hmm. shunned out of the way, it's now our time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, I find the fashion industry yeah. one of those ones that is, although it has a lot of bravado, they're very easily intimidated, mm -hmm. yeah. especially by young women or young marginalised people yeah. when they are doing so well. Mm -hmm. I find it almost funny to watch a lot of other designers that have a lot of prestige, you could say, mm -hmm. flap, mm -hmm. because they basically just scrutinise what Bethany and other designers are doing so well mm -hmm. and try and take it. But like you say, you, they don't have the inbuilt kind of passion and drive that she has and the connections that she has with charities and, and all those kind of things. What do you think, moving forward with the Magpie uh, project, what kind of relationship do you see that evolving? How do you kind of, because obviously now you've got a proper partnership. Yeah, with, uh, so uh, we, what Bethany's done is she's giving a percentage of her profits to uh, the project um, yeah. and also uh, she's um, persuading her partners uh, and her collaborators uh, to help us too. So Wool and the Gang, for example, uh, are launching a sock pattern. Uh, today or tomorrow mm. um, because uh, we don't get many socks donated to us and it's not a nice thing. <laughs> so, uh, so Will and the gang who obviously supply all her materials for her knitwear um, are coming on board with us. Melissa Kitty who has done all of these prints um, uh, has helped design a sock with Bethany mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're going on live online now the patterns and we're going to get all of the socks a little baby version and a mother's version so that's going to help us enormously that's brilliant. Um, and um, God willing some of her other collaborators are going to help too mm -hmm. um, but for us I think just seeing the issues of our mothers um, 
you know, there was a story in Vogue online. I mean, yeah. it's just nuts. It's so important because the thing I hear most from people is, oh, I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea this was happening in mm -hmm. London, you know. Um, so then you give people the information and I think people are genuinely lovely. Like mm. most people are lovely and they want to help. Yeah. And so then I hear all the time, you know, oh God, what, what can I do? What can I do? And the fashion industry is enormous and it's a billion dollar behemoth, you know, it's massive. Mm. And it could help enormously, mm. not only us, cause we're tiny, but you know, all marginalized women um, it could really help bring those marginalised people into the centre and share the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I'm probably over-egging the pudding a little bit here, but I just think that this is a sort of like, you know, a VHS and Betamax moment. And you've got, <laughs> and, and she is, or she's like the new Apple phone the first time it came out. Mm. You know, this is a different game. <laughs> and I think that the people, the, the people who are sitting with all of their consultants and all of their brand consultants going, oh, how can we be a bit more better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, <coughs> you, can't, you can't pay for authenticity no. and you can't pay for connection and you can't pay for community. And that's so, so they're not going to be able to do it. They're either in or they're out. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why I think it's just so exciting. And um, I think with the whole, I think she's kind of like, I know I'm going off on one. Um, okay, I think she's kind of out. like Greta Thunberg, do you know what I mean? Because she's so <laughs> what a statement. pure. I know, Greta right? Thunberg uh, or fashion. Too far? No, yeah, not it's a, love that. a fashion because she's just so authentic and you literally, she puts the arguments on the table and she lives them. Mm. And what can you do with that? Yeah. You know, like, you can't go, no, I don't really care about the trans community. I don't really care about, mm. you know, people who are homeless. You can't do that. So you have to do something. And I think this is the challenge mm -hmm. that she's given to the whole fashion industry yeah. and the luxury yeah. industry, actually. Mm. So, um, yeah, so exciting. Yeah. I think as well, sorry, but with the level of like change within the fashion industry, I think a lot of people, even I think within and outside of the fashion industry, think that it's, it's not an entity that can evoke change. But I think the way that, for me, her collection had trans people in it, yeah. I was actually, I know it sounds really bad, but like surprised to see like representation of my community there, but in like a very good way, mm. because so often it's not done, yes. or it's done and then it's slumped on the press release so mm. that you know that they're there yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. And I think, it's those changes, the changes that she's not necessarily shouting about, yeah, yeah. but Absolutely. that are then broadcast to millions of people the next day are yeah. the changes that I think if anyone was to take anything from it, those are the changes that I think everyone in the fashion industry could take and use in their work mm. very easily because it's seamless and it, you don't have to actually do a lot to, to make that change. It's just about being genuine, yeah. and being truthful yeah. to yourself as a person uh -huh. and being open and communicating with each other. Like all of us, we like share information and we like talk to each other about stuff. Like Beth's helped me so much, she's helped you so much. We like share information. Yeah. Like it's about being open and not being so much about, oh, my career and my own yeah, company yeah. and all of this. It's letting down those barriers and mm. helping each other move forward. And I think that is something that's really transitional that's happening or starting to happen now oh, in the fashion yeah. industry, especially within younger designers, because I think we see this and, you know, um, growing up, you have these aspirations to work at a fashion house and, you know, you hear all these stories about how, you know, people can't talk about what they do or, you know, it's all super secret. And I think mm. now, we're starting to realise that that's actually not the way to be progressive and to so create cool. change. Yeah. And now when we share suppliers or we share ideas of how we can do things, you know, it's just a lot more fluid and, yeah. it's, and it helps us all to progress quicker. Mm. Yeah. And I think especially what I've found personally within this kind of sustainability sphere of fashion, that people are a lot more open to share information mm. because yeah. everybody's working towards a common goal, which is to essentially save the planet, to make better, more human connections, to help people, and nobody, you know, it's not really about yourself anymore, it's mm. bigger than that. Yeah. And I Absolutely. think that's what um, Bethany's doing so well, and that's what hopefully we can all inspire, inspire us a lot to mm -hmm. do as well. Yeah. For sure.
she's definitely breaking down those um, traditional barriers of yeah. what fashion looked like before and I think the change is so welcome mm. and yeah everyone should really be practicing sustainability now yeah. more than ever and I feel like she is opening people's eyes yeah. not just in the fashion industry as well. How do you find that in the knitwear industry mm. or kind of that kind of design process do you think it's something that she's pioneering or do you think as a as a collective of designers do you think it's something that everyone is conscious of? I don't think everyone is conscious of it just yet. There mm -hmm. are still technologies that need to be developed in place, yeah. like for shipping as well. That's okay. quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Shipping across the world is still not as sustainable as it needs to be. But I definitely think she's trailblazing a way mm -hmm. for people to just also gain more knowledge in what sustainability mm -hmm. is, whether on the social side or ethical. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've learned lots from what she's doing, working with the homeless as well as something that's close to my heart. Yeah. So I think her training programs are just essential for the future yeah. <laughs> of fashion yeah, yeah. and <laughs> everything, yeah. And I have to say as well, going on from um, your point, like that connection with kind of social um, projects as a sustainable thing, I didn't really correlate the two yeah. mm -hmm. until Bethany put it on the map. Yeah. I, you know, I'm much from a practical, you know, recycling and reusing background, but, you know, when she started talking to me about it in terms of social projects, it's just something exactly as you said when she approached you, something I th never thought the two could go together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's just doing it in a way that's so seamless and just creating it such a normal mm -hmm. kind yeah. of business model yeah. uh, in a way, you know, just with all these things really addressed. And it's so obvious when you start yeah. thinking that's about the thing it. about it, isn't it? Once, you, once it's displayed so clearly. Yeah. I think that's why everyone wants to try and do it, is mm. because it's actually very obvious as yeah. something just to do. Um, I think on a design level as well, this might be a, a trad stereotype, but I think often the green industry gets a bad rap for, for having quite, uh, let's just say, well, my, my kind of focus when I look at fashion is I really love graduate fashion. Mm -hmm. And let's just say graduate fashion can often be like, a dress made out of water bottles. Yeah. Fine, if that's your yeah. gig, rock and roll. But like, I think this gives <laughs> a new, not necessarily a new, but like a very clear design stamp on that sustainable fashion doesn't have to, you know, be all hippy dippy and kind of like. Hundred percent. Yeah, like it's like we said earlier, it's so wearable. The silhouettes are so kind of unisex, but also like beyond that, like they're just clothes that have a very substantial shape and design, yeah. but are also really interesting. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I wasn't surprised by that, but I think a lot of people when you know, it's almost like, surprise, look, this is actually made from X, Y, Z. People are, maybe they've just got low expectations of yeah. fashion, sustainable fashion, but yeah. they're very surprised. Yeah. And I think in a way that's good. Yeah, that's what I like about it as well, that you could, you know, somebody that knew nothing about Bethany Williams could walk into a store and see the clothes and be like, oh my God, I love this, and yeah. just buy it because yeah. they love the silhouette, they love the yeah. feel, they love the material, they love the print. All those sort of things are so accessible. And, you know, I love that kind of idea of this secondary mm. um, discovery of, mm -hmm. the, of yeah. the piece in a way that, you know, maybe once you buy it, you go home, oh, who is this person? You know, look yeah. a bit more into it and you realise, oh my God, this print is, you know, this woman from Newham that, you know, and start linking all these mm. elements together that's just so mm. beautiful in a way. And I think that's... Um, yeah, that's like really when, a when, the, when the, the garments in the hands of whoever buys it, they are a part of that story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like oh, you buy, you're inspired for a collection, you make the collection, you buy it, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. it forever, you know, you have that story, yeah. and you own a part of it. You are a part of it, yeah. I think that's so great. Um, when I was doing the um, sh a couple of pairs of shoes for the collection as well, it was really nice because Bethany gave me all her offcuts, which I made the design from, and um, one of the pieces was one of the magpie prints. And straight away, I, you know, after she told me the story, I was like, right, I'm going to do one tongue with the woman and her um, child, and then the other tongue with the magpie logo on like a pair of shoes, mm. and just like those little elements that no one would really noticed, yeah. but just 
giving that story, um, which I think is so important. So, um, yeah, really, really. Love that one. Just great, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's so great. It's great. <laughs> to kind of wrap, what do we think is next? I love that question because it's so boring. What do we think is next? What, what? Yeah, I a think, very simple question. I think there's so much more to be yeah. done. I mean, she's doing amazing, of course, but I think she's going to do so much more with um, just combining all of the social, ethical, sustainable together. Mm -hmm. And I think the world will know what that means and how that can really be a change maker in our society. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's doing a lot with ethical fashion. I know just to echo what you were saying before, um, when I was studying, ethical fashion was kind of like, you know, the brown linen, yeah. 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 Sort of aspect. <laughs> but longer the days, like, the mm. her collection is so contemporary. Yeah. And honestly, anyone would love to wear that. Yeah. I think what to remember as well that Bethany has one member of staff. Yeah. She doesn't take any interns <laughs> yeah. because for her, it's so ingrained in the whole entire process that she can't just, oh, it's okay, you know, oh, we'll buy this, oh, we'll buy that. No one will know. There are people who do that, but not Bethany. You know, it, it's so inside her soul that she just cannot, you know. Well, it's the same, I think, as well. Yeah. Um, but I think it's so great that now people are really recognising what she's doing and for the right or wrong reasons are promoting, you know, if they feel like they need to be on the bandwagon or not. But I think to put... To, Bethany's a leader, and for her to be now put at this level, and I'm sure bigger and bigger, is mm -hmm. it's really comforting to me. Yeah, 100%. I think, yeah, she's, she's so inspiring to uh, designers that already exist, you know, like us, like to designers that are coming up, that are um, studying now, and I think that these sort of um, morals are going to be more and more ingrained into people's ideas as they study fashion, as they start their businesses. And, you know, she is, yeah, really leading and trailblazing this path that I think isn't going to go anywhere mm. and um, it's only going to get more and more important. Yeah, and also this um, idea, as we said before, of brands kind of scrambling to work out how exactly they can work with her. Mm. I think, you know, what she's doing is such a testament to her morals that there's going to be more of that and more brands adapting to try and find how they can work with her. Mm -hmm. And that sort of system is when then she can really make some big change. Because mm -hmm. if you're challenging those big fashion houses to say, yep. you can only work with me if you do it like this, then um, that's when things are really going to shift, I think. So, um, yeah, exciting stuff. Yeah, I think she's really, I think she's creating a blueprint uh, for what needs to happen in the future mm. and, uh, and it's so exciting because I think like you say she's asking the question of everybody else you know because as you said people said oh it's not possible it won't sell it won't look nice mm -hmm. yeah you know um, and she's answered all those questions mm -hmm. and says yeah it will it does it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so she's asking the question of everybody else um, and I think that's what's so exciting is and also she's so generous in mm -hmm. showing the way to uh, other upcoming fashion designers and collaborating mm -hmm. and she's still very involved in, uh, in in all of the students and so on so you know um, she was saying to me that she's uh, that she wants to take on more art projects mm. and it to be bigger than fashion and for us for us I think it's already bigger than fashion I mean it's yeah, just absolutely. Um, and then fashion becomes uh, you know fashion is actually just sort of pressed into service mm. of a bigger picture which I think is really wonderful fashion's not the end goal mm -hmm. it's a tool with which you can change yeah. the world you know what so, beautiful so, poetry yeah. to end on yeah she's a pioneer I'm <laughs> yeah. just so trying beautiful. to think of the word I was like what is it I was like yeah she's a pioneer yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> well brilliant thank you so much and I think that's a nice note to close on. Um, thank you to everyone for watching. For more extensive Fashion Week coverage, be sure to check out showstudio.com. And if you're watching via Showstudio's YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.